Welcome to Math Wars. My guess is that each of you poured your own meaning into the title of our workshop and then clicked the button wondering what we were going to talk about. To some of you, Math Wars might be the almost daily interchange you have with your 12-year-old. When am I ever going to need this stuff, Mom? Or perhaps to you, Math Wars represents the battle you have with yourself, knowing that you really need to include math in your homeschooling day, but you desperately don't want to. Or perhaps you thought we might mean the battle between different math curricula as to which is the best. After all, we are a Rainbow Resource Center seller of math books. You might be surprised to know that if you Googled Math Wars, you would come up with some 30 million responses. In Google land, the term Math Wars means something. And what it means is the ongoing debate between mastery learning and what is called higher order learning. I'm Janice Price, one of Rainbow's team of homeschooling consultants. Hardly a day goes by as I talk to moms and dads that I don't address at least one question in math. And most days will bring lots of math questions. You want to know what are the best and the strongest math choices. You want to know what is the difference between this series and that series. You want to know what to use when something else isn't working. You want to know how to get a student caught up to where they should be. And you want to know what programs are the easiest to use. Math is all about formulas, and I'm happy to say that we've developed a surefire formula to predict exactly what math program you should be using. All you have to do is compute your math curriculum selection number, your MCSN. Start by multiplying the number of children you have by the number of years you've been homeschooling, and then divide by the number of math programs you've tried. If your answer is an even number, then of course you should use Singapore, because even Little children know that the Asian countries are good at math. If your answer is an odd number, then you probably should use Life of Fred because it's quirky and just a little bit odd. If your answer has a fraction in it, then you should probably be using Saxon because it rhymes with fraction. Obviously, these suggestions are provided for humor, although all three of the math programs are very strong. Unfortunately, there is no surefire formula for determining your MCSN and subsequently the perfect math choice. I guess that means we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way and stick with your questions. My plan is to give you a general overview of math education for homeschoolers, to look at some of the factors that are involved in making a good selection for your family, and to address some questions that were frequently asked. My husband and I started homeschooling in 1985. There weren't a lot of curriculum choices back then, and we chose Bob Jones over another because somebody recommended it. We did well with it, but when Saxon came on the scene with a strong recommendation from Mary Pride, we made the switch. Saxon worked well for us. It was easy to use, well-defined for my kids, and they performed well. If there was a bit of a slogging feel to it, I wasn't asking too many questions because it was getting the job done. I had no idea that we, along with many other homeschoolers and some private schools, were supplying ammunition for the math wars that were going on in the public schools. What to teach and how to teach it has long been a struggle in terms of math education. You might even say it is a struggle between the teachers of math, those who are concerned with how math is taught, and mathematicians, those who are concerned with what is taught. For a while, the educators were the one in charge, and in the early 1900s, the idea of guide on the side and not a sage on the stage prevailed. That is, until the awkward moment in the 1940s when both the armed forces and industry realized that they had to offer remedial programs. New math emerged in 1950s, the result of mathematicians' influence and the space race after the Sputnik launch. But new math was too formal. Teachers did not know how to teach it. Parents did not know how to help. By the 1970s, new math was dead, and progressive educators were once again the most influential but there began to emerge a call to return to basics and a call for standards. In 1989, the National Council of the Teachers of Mathematics, the NCTM, published standards that set some general goals everybody was happy with. But they also de-emphasized long division and fraction computation, and for the first time strongly encouraged the use of calculators. Funded by the National Science Foundation, a number of math programs were developed in compliance with these standards, but they quickly became unpopular with parents. The math wars had flared into open battles. Written criticisms came from many directions, with parent groups on either coast becoming the most vocal, 
websites and coalition groups opposed to the standards were established, several parallel events occurred to support their claims. First, standard achievement test scores continued to decline. Then, international math test scores showed Americans trailing miserably behind the Asian nations like Singapore. Finally, homeschoolers using Saxon and later Singapore math programs as well as other basics curricula were getting attention because their standardized test scores were much higher than the public school students. California became the focal point and after several task force reports, a 1996 bill forced the rewriting of the math standards. Adopted in December of 1997, the California standards were clear, coherent, and they were competitive with the math standards of the highest performing countries. The NCTM, protesting all the way, republished their standards in 2000 and again in 2006. The final chapter in this saga involves the Common Core Standards, a response to the somewhat unpopular No Child Left Behind program. Adopted now by over 40 states, the Common Core math standards are stronger than many states' previous standards, but they're not as strong as others, including California. Common Core does a pretty good job with arithmetic and even a very good job with fractions. These skills are a foundation for higher level math. Unfortunately, expectations for algebra and geometry were quite a bit lower than the published standards of other countries. So what does all of this mean for us? Why is all of this information important to homeschoolers? If math curriculum products say they are aligned to standards, we need to ask what standards? The NCTM? And then what year? 1989, 2000, 2006? Or are they the California standards of 1997? or now the new Common Core Standards. My sister is the high school math teacher and she's had to face the unprepared casualties of the math wars. She says that students entering high school are calculator dependent, unable to do long division, and they have a fear of fractions. <gasps> Most importantly, they lack any sense of connectedness, how numbers work together. All of these issues have to be addressed before she can even begin the basics of algebra and geometry. She compares math education to the game of Jenga. Have you ever played Jenga? It takes several minutes to set up the game. Wooden blocks exactly the same size are laid three abreast and then topped by three more laid abreast and perpendicular to the previous row. A Jenga tower is carefully built through 18 layers. The resultant tower is solid and strong. Then the play begins. With each turn, a player removes a block from the tower and adds it to the top resulting in a taller but increasingly unstable tower. At some point, with some block removal, the tower collapses. What, you may be wondering, does this have to do with math? Well, that's a good question. Assume that those 18 levels correspond to the foundational math skills of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then fractions, decimals, and percents, basic arithmetic skills. Those skills need to be laid carefully and sequentially through the elementary years, and the student needs to be proficient in them. More than proficiency, the student needs to develop a number sense, the intuitive sense of what numbers mean to each other and how they interact. Fact families, or number bonds as they are sometimes called, are a good example of this. These facts belong to the same family and they interrelate with each other. If a student's math tower is solid and strong, then they are ready and prepared to start building the upper levels, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, calculus. However, if blocks have been removed because a student can't remember certain skills, or if they were never there in the first place, the structure is unstable and the student will have difficulty topping it off with higher level math. If enough blocks are missing, the entire structure will topple and the student will be mired in a pile of miscellaneous skills without ever understanding the beauty and the complexity or the sturdiness of the structure as it is supposed to be.